So the next topic is the doing the shrine of um, in the Sterling Museum. This is from about 1330. Uh, usually the shrine, it's, it was in the front side. But the interesting thing is that you, can, you could walk around and the back side was also painted. So it's, it, it was for many years against the wall, so you cannot see the back side, but this back side was uh, repainted later. So there was a lot of yeah, changes done in time, but still you can see that there is something behind it. So they took it from the wall for us and we were able to measure the back side. So you see here the instrument in front of, of the back side. And they wanted us to measure the entire thing in two days. And it's a big thing. Okay, we got a lot. We didn't got everything, but if you if we bake everything, they don't buy. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, uh, we were trying really day and night for for these two days. It was a beautiful place. I mean, you see Kanak, and everybody is looking at your work. So <laughs> yeah, okay. We did a, in the total we did two or two two square meters of measurements. So this is a detail measure, uh, uh, stitching uh, images that were done by Stereo Museum where you see all the panels. And now this is the central panel. So do you see the painting below? You know, actually you see the, the Baroque and later all the paint. But if you're now looking at the elements, you see there's copper and zinc, some kind of things here. The problem is that some colors where your paintings were your uh, pigments were used in the two tongues. It was you need to play a little bit with the thresholds to, to really identify what it was. But especially lucky, they were using arsenic. And after they saw this one, for me it was not clear at the beginning. That I need a little bit of help. And yeah, that's what we see here. It was the Christopher. And the story is that if you were seeing Christopher, you will not die at this day. So you try to put it everywhere so that when you come across, you don't die. So that's what's the idea, what is very important in these times, to see them from time to time, so I don't want to get in trouble within that day. So and actually you see here behind that, which is that the moment is completely gone. You see here the little Jesus with the earth on, on his hand. You see here the, the holy, um, what's the name of the English for The holy, <laughs> thank you. And uh, yeah, you see here the tree where he's holding himself because it's that heavy. So here is a tree, piece of wood, which is holding himself. So you can see a lot of the parts of, of the whole story, depending here, you see the, the tree in the iron, then that's the top of the or what he's holding. So you can see a lot of information and really identify what's there. Some others, you could see the face, which is somewhere here. We cannot see it here, but we can see the face <coughs> of the people that were there. Some of them we could identify which kind of holy we have in there because the attributes were very specific. Here this is the Holy Barbara, which is always characterized by the crown with the jewel. <coughs> the little tower here on the side, and then you have the sword or this kind of palm on, on the other hand. So it's clear to which holy this is attributed. And so we were trying just to figure out which one was at what location. And you remember that was the beginning of, and that was what we got in this day after the two days of work. And you see here, this is the last reconstruction with all the colors trying to get the best match. Here is the Holy Barbara. Here we have other ones that we were not able to recognize all of them. Some of them are not, let's say, very specific. Maybe they have been able to identify more of them, but that was a very nice work of just, yeah, trying to get as much as possible. We still have a little bit to go.